Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another V Rising fundamental video within my series. This is the fundamental video on how to strategically place your castle. So we're going to be a little bit theory crafting here and talking about the endgame meta and different things of that nature. So this is on my endgame character, and uh, on my next video, I'm going to be showcasing how to rush at fresh start, at server launch, um, things of that nature, to get way ahead of the curve and prepare for endgame. So pulling up the map here, you see that we're in uh, tier 3. We're in Silverlight Hills. This is the last area of the game. And so what I've done here is I've put my castle heart down and I've built a wall which completely blocks off this choke. So just to show you, there's actually no way into this spot on the map because we've only had to put up a couple of walls here. Obviously, you're going to want to upgrade these wood walls to stone. That way, someone will actually have to be level, you know, somewhere around 50 to have achieved the siege golem in order to drop a siege. However, keep in mind that in V Rising, on a PvE or a PvP server, no one can take your castle from you. you they cannot destroy your castle. So, by blocking off this area just at the start of the game, just at later game, however you want to progress, we have effectively given ourselves this entire territory in the game. So this, on my rating scale, I'm sorry, it's sunlight. Let me uh, let me try to put myself in a decent tree range. We might actually survive while we talk about this. So this is undoubtedly the number one spot in the entire game. This is the best spot in the game, hands down. You have access to the Bright Haven Zone, which has all the endgame T3 mats, and the Sacred Silver Mine, which again has all the T3 mats. So you're directly next to the best two farming zones in the entire game. That also means you're going to have access to Tier 3 Servants, and the availability to pull those to your castle instantly. Obviously look for the higher tier 100% Blood Servants for eating, and for sending out on missions, and for Siege Defense. And that's going to be the case um, for for all of T3. And so this right here is going to be your number one. And since you have a clan of four, here is the most perfect meta strategy in the entire game without a doubt. One player rushes here at launch and blocks this whole area off. Their castle will be 250 tiles long on official servers. So one player can have all of this. Uh, we're going to talk about two different strategies here. So one player could have all of this within your clan of four. You come up here and you block this off. It's going to be very similar. You'd probably put your castle heart here, and then you would block off your choke, your chokes here with walls, and then no one else can build in this entire area. So this is spot two for best in slot. Obviously, you're still pretty close to the silver mine and Bright Haven Square. The only really downside to this spot um, is that the respawn point is right here. So during a siege, they're going to be able to get back to siege you really fast. Um, for here, it seems like it's... It's close, but it's actually not because there's a lot of monsters in the road here. Uh, a lot of packs of riflemen that will stop you. And so th those players will be injured by the time they get back to the siege and have to waste blood and resources. The third best spot uh, for T3 is going to be down here. Again, very similar. You're going to place your castle heart somewhere here or here. And you're going to block off this choke and you're going to build walls across this. So those are really uh, the three best spots here in T3. You could also say that this is a decent spot, and again, you'd place your castle heart somewhere like here, uh, and you'd build walls here to block this choke off, um, then no one can get to you, but this is obviously the worst spot. There's not as much space. Now, this is all up for debate, but realistically, those are the only four spots in all of T3, so those are going to be the best four spots in the game at endgame. And you can run straight to these spots, place your heart down, and put up some walls, and no one else can build behind you or siege you um, realistically. And of course, we're not just going to stop at wood because it's very easy to get bombs for wood. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to build, you know, reinforced walls here. And you don't need a lot to do that, right? So all you would have to do is sit back there. In all these spots, there's plenty of wooden trees. You can get them at any item level. So you'll just be grinding resources for probably 30 minutes just to build up your keep um, before returning to tier one um, and starting your journey as a new character. Now this is a very end game meta strategy, but even if you're not rushing there, without a doubt, these are the best four spots in the game. Now a good clan would consider having one player go to each of these spots 
and building walls. You've now effectively blocked off this entire zone. Your clan at launch can own this entire zone on a PVE or PVP server. Now moving to secondary spots and tertiary spots, we'll be at the top of T2 here and we'll talk about why this is a good spot. Um, this spot is wonderful because there is a teleporter with resources, a cave passage if you will, from Cursed Forest to here. So basically you'll have access to Cursed Forest and you'll be pretty close to the T3 zone, right? It's also a bit safer to start off here and to build, plus you'll be closer to T2 for farming T2 and kind of living the dream and coming up. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, this would be six, similar reasons, of course. This would be seven, in my opinion, um, or something along those lines. But an interesting theory as well is to have this spot here. First of all, there's a lot of space here. So you would block off these chokes here. And you could have plenty of castles in there, plenty of space. But the reason why this spot is good, it could be even considered um, a rank one through four spot or maybe, you know, Probably not, probably not one through four, but a really good spot is because Cursed Forest here gives a cave, cave passage, excuse me, here. So you'd be really good at, at getting your farmed mats back to your keep from Cursed Forest. And then additionally, um, it's not that far of a run to T3, right? Y you don't have very far to go and you're there, but it is a run. So again, we're probably looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven maybe seven, maybe eight, but these are really your, your best spots in the game. This is obviously gonna be similar to this because you've got Cursed Forest access right here. So for this, this, and this, you're pretty close. Maybe also this. And then you're also decently close to T3, right? It's not too, too far of a run. But overall, those are going to be um, theoretically the best spots in the game. Now, just to go over one more is Cave Passage and Cave Passage lets out over here from T3, Silverlight Hills. So you could have a keep here, or maybe here or here or here or here. Um, and you are gonna see a lot of players with keeps in these locations. Um, so your T3 farming will let off here and then you will be able to you know, instantly have those mats. And then you can also teleport from your keep up here. So that's just a good spot, but for sure having your keep within T3 is gonna be the fastest, best and most safe thing to do. And for sieges, um, those players that are sieging you are going to have to be pushing through tier 3 monsters in order to fight you after respawning. And that's going to be the, uh, the biggest concern, is them losing health on the way back to the siege. Obviously, in the tier 1 locations, they don't have to worry about that. So, as far as defensive goes, having your castle in T3 will be best in slot. So, now... What I'm gonna do is a rush to see how fast it's gonna take from launch to get from the starting zone all the way up to Dunley Farmlands, excuse me, starting zone. Uh, we'll, we'd probably do Farbane West to a horse, which is somewhere over here. And then the horse to here and then to here and we're gonna be building. So in the next fundamental video, it will be racing to your end game keep in order to secure the location with just the amount of time it'll take to actually get there, farm resources, and build your little castle. So that is the end of the, this video, guys. Please leave your comments on, on what you think as far as the ranking goes and what your clan strategies are. Now, this is more of an end game strategy, of course. So just to, uh, to kind of go over what's, what's not a PvP end game strategy, um, just a way to level up is going to be to probably just hang out and do kind of a, a nomad life with your your clan mates and your friends. Maybe consider starting at the uh, the copper mine for T1, which is somewhere over here, and farming up some mats like copper. And then you've got your iron mine for T2. You could have your castle, get some mats there, and then you could always put your castle in cursed forest. Because remember, you can always dismantle your castle and move it. You're just limited on inventory slots. And on a PvP server, if you die, you drop your inventory. So moving your castle is going to be dangerous, but it is something that's possible. But just with this in mind, as one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, seven, something like this, th there are a limited amount of castle spaces on the map. 
and one player's territory can be 250 tiles long, so clans can theoretically take really, really good spots, and there's no way to actually dislodge them on a PvE or a PvP server unless it's full loot. So getting a castle early is going to be very smart, and I hope this helped you guys kind of figure out where you want to be. All right, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time for our next fundamental video on racing to securing a good keep.